God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Pastor Odell McFarland III, and I am this new pastor of God's Harbor for All Souls, located at 4100 Maple Avenue in Richton Park, Illinois. It gives me great pleasure to come to you again this Sunday to share the Word of God with you. And we're excited to share the message uh, that God has laid on our heart, but uh, we wanted to make a couple of quick announcements uh, to the body of Christ. Uh, one being that next week is Easter Sunday. And I don't know about you, but it is exciting to know that we have made it through another Easter although it disappoints us that we won't be in our physical location. Uh, but I am pleased to announce that on next Sunday, we will have a live Zoom communion. And so I'm encouraging you to get dressed in your best Sundays, amen, and join us uh, to have fellowship with each other, amen. If you don't want to Zoom, if you don't want to come on, that's okay, you can still listen in. Amen. And we will provide the details, amen, later today in, at the end of the service on how you can go about uh, joining that Zoom call. Amen. As we find ourselves finally getting together, amen, on Sunday, participating in communion. And then after that communion, uh, feel free to log back in and to listen to uh, the extension of today's message as we really focus on uh, the covenant life and, and what it brings to us in terms of its success. And so we're happy uh, to, to share with uh, our family and friends that on next Sunday we'll be doing a live Zoom where we will be having communion uh, together as a family, as a body of Christ. And so we're excited about that. And we're also excited to share that on May 23rd, uh, we are aiming to have family, friends uh, day at God's Harbor on the grounds where we will be having, amen, food, fun, and uh, for those who can join us, amen, we would happily have you on that day, amen, as we pray that the weather will cooperate, uh, but we're excited about, amen, releasing and coming out and sharing with one another, Amen. As I am just so excited how God has continued to bless us and to bless our local body in the midst of a pandemic. Amen. We are so fortunate that none have been lost or have perished. And we are thankful for his grace and his mercy uh, for how he has continued to bless us in the midst of. Amen. And so we're so excited to share, amen, those announcements with you. Amen. And we're so excited about what God is doing in this local body in the midst of, amen, how he's continuously drawing us closer together, amen, how I've had so many wonderful testimonies of answered prayer and what God is doing in each other's life and how we have reached out, amen, to call, to text, to love on each other in the midst of this, amen. And as you can imagine, it is difficult for all pastors across this great land, across the, the, the nations, Amen. Especially here at God's Harbor as well. We are no different. Amen. As the pastor, it is a struggle not to be able to see and to share and to participate. But we're thankful and by faith we continue to minister. Amen. Hoping that you will join and listen to the word of God and continue to be built up and to be served the word of God. It is not the same as being in our local body, but we're thankful. Amen. That God has still allowed us a venue. Amen. And a major shout out to Mike. Dear Sister Kim Applewhite, uh, for so many of you, you know who she is. She has done a magnificent job at allowing us to share the Word of God. And I am so thankful for her and for her ministry of allowing us to come each Sunday uh, to minister to you. And right now, we're going to get right into the Word of God because I truly believe that in this time, God truly wants us to understand that these next few weeks, as we commemorate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we need to understand that the gospel really begins at the cross. Amen. And today, I really want to take my time and be 
able to explain to you and really parse the word of God and to bring revelation and knowledge regarding the new covenant. Because God has given us access to a covenant that I want you to know you have access to. And when we understand that covenant, I truly believe that you will pray with holy boldness and you will speak with courage and you will have your heads lifted up knowing that you have the authority to come against the enemy when you understand the covenant that you have backing you. And it is so exciting to understand that God has a new, amen. And so many of us, unfortunately, amen, we have been taught down through the years to live in both the old and the new. And for so many, they have been turned off because of religion and because of the lack of understanding of the word of God, especially as we know that God is no longer operating in the old covenant, but so many of us for the past few decades have been living a man in the old. And we know through God's word that it is impossible to pour new wine in an old wineskin. It cannot exist. You can't have the old wine skin and new wine being poured in. Amen. As we try to explain and to operate with greater revelation and greater knowledge of why it is impossible to live in the old and in the new. But I am so thankful that God has given us wisdom and revelation on how to break down the word of God because he wants his people amen, to understand that it is this new covenant. And we celebrate in the next week, we will be celebrating his resurrection. And when we understand what that means, it is the beginning of life. It is the beginning, amen, of a new inheritance. It is the beginning of new benefits that Jesus has given us, amen, through his death, his burial, and thank God for his resurrection. And it all starts with the cross. The cross is the really the beginning of what I call the New Testament. And although we think of Matthew, amen, through Revelation as the New Testament, it truly, amen, starts with the death of Christ and the beginnings of that unveiling or the renting of the veil which allows us now to have access to God and to the holies of holies through his Holy Spirit. And so I want you to take notes and to listen to what God has to share with you today, because I truly believe that you will be blessed with the word of God. Amen. As so many of us, amen, still have not quite caught on to the revelation of what it means to walk in his new covenant. Amen. And when you begin to understand it, I pray that God will begin to open up new doors for you as it relates to revelation of his word uh, relative to the old and the new covenant. Let's go directly to the word of God. Let's go to Hebrews, the eighth chapter. And I want to show you something. We're going to start with uh, Hebrews 8 and verse 13. And I want you to go to the amplified version if you have it. And I want you to understand, it says, when God speaks of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. And whatever is becoming obsolete, out of use, annulled, and growing old is ready to disappear. And so people of God, I want you to understand that the Old Testament, uh, we are not to get rid of it, but we need to make sure that we understand how to rightly divide the word of truth and to understand the dispensation in which we live in now. It's just like reading a history book and understanding what happened, amen, with uh, 1776, when we had, amen, our presidents and our new form of government. Well, we don't live in that time. We live in the now, but we can't forget our history. So it is with the word of God. We cannot forget where God has brought us from, from the old, and you will see in the scriptures that God, through his word, has concealed Jesus Christ. But in the New Testament, he has revealed who he is and what he is able to do for us through his gracious benefits. And so I pray that you understand that when 
God saw that there was a better way to deal with sin, he sent his own son, amen, so that we would have a new covenant or a new way of communicating with him that is far better than the old. Let's go. Let's stay in the Amplified. And I want to share with you in Hebrews, the eighth chapter in the seventh verse, it says, for if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion for a second one or an attempt to institute another one, the new covenant. Verse eight, however, God finds fault with them, showing its inadequacy when he says, behold, the days will come, said the Lord, when I will make and ratify a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And I want you to understand that a covenant is not just any type of agreement. It is a blood agreement that God has made with us with the very death of his own son. And you cannot have a new covenant or a ratification of a covenant unless it is by blood, unless there is death. And so because death had to bring us an inheritance or a new agreement, he ushered his own son to demolish or to obsolete the old. Huh, somebody say, thank God for Jesus. And if it wasn't for his son, and if it wasn't for his son yielding himself, yielding his will, we would not have the ability to have the gospel that we have today. It's just that plain that we need to be thankful for his son Amen. And for God the Father for giving us his son so that we can have better inheritance, a better plan than we had under the old covenant. Amen. And unfortunately, so many believers want to continue to live in the old covenant. They still believe that there is a God who is angry with us, a God who wants to put sickness and disease on us to humble us or to improve our character. Amen. That is not the case. And I pray that you have been listening to the word of God and that you have been embedded in the ministry, if you have not been a part of our ministry, that have been teaching you the word of God. Because unfortunately, the enemy has been bringing heresy and been bringing, amen, false doctrine where we have still been living, amen, what I call a mixture of both the old and the new. And how many know that in order for God to continue to do what he does, it's all in the new. Amen. It's all in the new. And so I pray that as we begin to study the word of God and you begin to understand, amen, that he has a better plan for you, that you will walk in that plan. It reminds me of a story of a old lady who was dying, amen, in a shack or shanty. And the man came and he began, amen, to look around the house and he saw a frame and he saw a paper in the frame and he looked in the frame and behold, it was a signed will by a wealthy man who she had worked for for many years. And she did not know exactly what it was that she had. And the man who had came to look after her before she passed said, did you not know what you had? as he has given you the entire wealth of his businesses, of his real estate. And she said, I didn't know because I could not read what was given to me. And I want you to know today that that is the same in the body of Christ. Because we don't take the time to read, because we don't take the time to get into God's word for ourselves. We have failed to hear and to understand the plentiful blessings that God has given to us because of his new covenant, because of what his son did on Calvary. And unfortunately, so many of us, we will unfortunately live a life without knowing all of the benefits that we could have had here on earth. And we will only get to heaven to find out that we could have been living majestic life full of his grace and full of his uh, blessings if we would have only understood what was in God's word. 
And that's why I say, get into the Word of God. Find out for yourself. Don't just wait for a man to tell you, amen, although his prophets and his teachers are so important. But it is also your responsibility to get into the Word of God and to understand what he is speaking to you on today. Amen. I want to share with you in his word, amen, that we see here in Psalms. I want to show you Psalms 100. Psalms 103. Verse 1. Let's continue to stay in the in the Amplified. It says, Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget any of his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your ear, your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. How many know that in this new covenant there is gracious benefits? And we see here concealed in Psalms 103 is what he wants to reveal to you in his new covenant. Amen. That he is there to forgive all of your sins, to heal all of your diseases. How many know that when we begin to understand what the new covenant brings, we will begin to be excited and praise him like we've never praised him because we have come into the knowledge of what his benefits are to us in this new covenant. Amen. I don't want you to miss out, amen, on the healing that God has for you or the blessings that he has for you, or the peace that he has for you, amen, by living in the Old Testament and not walking in this new covenant, amen. And today, as we begin to study the word of God, I pray that you will find solace knowing that when you have a complete understanding, amen, that God is no longer in the law, but he is in grace, and grace really is the foundation of this new covenant. Hallelujah. Grace is the new foundation of what God wanted to give to us through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection that so many of us have lacked to truly understand. Amen. And I pray today that God will reveal himself to you, amen, like you've never seen before. Did you not know for 1,500 years, amen, before Jesus came, Man has been attempting to live a life under the law. And what the law couldn't do, grace now allows us to do. Did you not know the very best man that God had under the law, David? He was not able to graciously live a man without failing. And we see that the law presented itself, a man, as a failure but what grace provides to us is, is that he gives the worst sinner the opportunity to be righteous. And God doesn't look at our failures, but he looks at what we are to become under his grace. And people of God, I want to share this word with you today because so many of us, amen, have been judging people without understanding that God has a different set of lens that he is looking at mankind. And so many of us, as we have become now sanctified and full of salvation, we have forgot whence we have come from and we have turned an eye and we have failed to see the same God in the eyes that he sees other mankind. And we begin to see that God, who is gracious, amen, and his mercy and his favor towards those because we are no longer living up to an expectation Amen. Of laws. And I want to share with you today that the law is not meant for the believer. Amen. The law is not meant for the believer. The law is meant for the sinner. Let me show you. Let's go into the word. Let's go to, amen, 1 Timothy. 
1 Timothy, first chapter. And I'm going to go back to the King James Version on this. Amen. 1 Timothy 1, 8 through 10. I pray that this is blessing your soul. Amen. And that you get an understanding. We're going to go back to the King James Version. Verse 8. It says, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. Verse 10, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. How many know that the law, when we look at it, was meant to bring sin conscience? The law was to show you your deficiencies before the Almighty God. The law was to show you that you, amen, could not live up to the standard of the law, amen, and it was for to bring consciousness of who you were not, amen. And so when we look at the old covenant, the old covenant that was based on the laws and the principles of Moses, amen, it is now obsolete, amen. God is no longer looking for you to see the law to reveal sin conscious, but he is now looking for you to see his son Jesus to bring grace, which brings Christ consciousness, to bring righteous consciousness. And when we begin to understand that there is a new giant on the block and it is grace, when we begin to understand that God now sees us, amen, as Jesus saw us on the cross, as someone who is righteous versus someone who is evil, you will begin to have a different perspective when you pray. You will begin to have a different perspective when you speak with the authority of the word of God because now God is showing you that you are just not a law abider, but you are a grace abider. Amen. That is a powerful word that God has for you today that you are no longer walking under the law but you are walking under grace. And his righteousness has been provided to us by his son, Christ Jesus, on the cross. Amen. I want you to know that that is good news. It is good news knowing that Jesus has provided everything that we need to establish ourselves in this new covenant. And when you wake up in the morning, you should feel excited to understand that there is no longer an expectation, amen, or works that you have to live up to to receive the very grace of God. It has been provided to us in this new covenant that has great benefits, and all we have to do is allow the finished work of Jesus Christ to be established in our life. Amen. That is good news. And so, my friends, that is the gospel that I want you to preach. That as you look at your cousins and your friends and your sisters and your brothers or your family members who are not born again, amen, your life should speak to the powerful grace and you should not put them in bondage by looking at what they're doing, but see them as being holy by speaking a positive word of grace into their life. Letting them know that God is no longer angry with them, that God is not mad at them, that God is not looking to see them fail, that God is not putting a damnable disease on this earth to destroy mankind, but God is full of love. He is full of grace and he is full of mercy. That is the God that we serve. It is a shift. It is a paradigm shift. Amen. That we, the believers, have to walk in. Amen. And when we walk in it, Amen. We will see that God will establish us and he will bring more folks into the kingdom because we preach a gospel, amen, that will resonate in the hearts and minds of people. Amen. I never forget, amen, after I ministered this word at our local body, 
Amen. So many came to me, amen, and they didn't understand, amen, what this new grace gave, gave them. Because so many of us were trying to live up to an expectation. We were still living under the law. We thought we had to give or to be perfect, or we had to do certain things to acquire, amen, God's grace and his favor. But that is not the case. Amen. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. All you have to do is accept what he did on Calvary, and the new covenant is yours. By being a believer, by accepting Christ into your life, you will obsolete the old and bring in the new, and the new will bring believers into the kingdom of God. When we stop focusing on people's sin and focus on God's righteousness through Jesus Christ, you will see that people will flock to the kingdom because they will want the healing virtue, the peace. They will want the prosperity and the very authority that we have as we operate in God's grace. Amen. And I am here because I am so excited about what God wants to share with the people today, not in the old, but in the new. There is a success that God is clamoring for in your life by walking in this new covenant where we are no longer under the law, which puts us under condemnation, which makes us sin conscious, which brings death and not life. God is saying no more. That is obsolete. We're moving on into the new. Amen. How many of us are ready to walk into this new covenant that has been provided with us through Jesus Christ. Amen. And for the next few weeks, amen, we're going to be ministering on what this powerful covenant does to us. And we will show you through the word of God how you, when you have accepted him as your savior, how you will be so much more, amen, benefited from what his word has for you versus the old. Amen. We've got a couple of more scriptures that we want to share, and then we're going to wrap this up. Now, turn with me, amen, uh, to Hosea, the fourth chapter. Hosea 4, 6. Hosea 4, 6. It says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Amen. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. I want you to understand that we perish because we don't have knowledge of this grace, of this new covenant. And for the next few weeks, we're going to be expounding a word to you to explain to you the differences between the law in the Old Testament and what it rendered and the new covenant that God has rendered to you. Amen. And when you become knowledgeable, amen, and when you know your rights in God, it will bring a peace, a confidence, a courage to you like you've never seen before. You will begin to pray with a, a ferociousness like you've never prayed before, knowing that God is hearing your prayers, knowing that you're aligning yourself with the very will of God and walking in this new covenant that God has given you and that everything that pertains to life and godliness is yours in this new covenant. Amen. I am so excited today, amen, about what God is about to do in your life. Amen. And what the law could not bring, grace is bringing. Hallelujah. Amen. When the law, amen, demanded self, amen, grace came in and said, no self, it is all Christ. When the law brought death, amen, grace says, no death, I am bringing life. Amen. When the law said that works through the self was magnified, grace stepped in and says, not self, but all Christ. Amen. When the law stepped in and brought sin consciousness to you, grace stepped in and said, no more sin consciousness. I want you to know 
that it's all about his righteousness. Amen. When the law stepped in and brought itself, amen, shame and degradation and self-sufficiency, grace says it's not about you. It's not about your deficiencies, but it's all about what Christ has done and what he has provided to you. My Lord, that is good news. Amen. And I am so excited to be able to share that good news with you in these upcoming weeks as we begin to share and study the word of God, as we begin to go through the book of Hebrews and understand, amen, that in this new covenant, hallelujah, God has graced us with something that is greater than what man has provided to us in times past. And I want you to understand, amen, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what any, amen, body preaches that is not the word of God. Amen. We are not living in the past. We're not going back in the old. How many know that his benefits of forgiveness, his benefits of healing, amen, is for you? How can a God who has given his son to save us, to heal us, why would he bring sickness on us? Why would he bring calamity on us to teach us a lesson? When we begin to mix the old and the new, amen, we begin to discredit the grace, amen, and give more credit to the law. And that is not what God wants us to do, amen. He wants us to understand and rightly divide the word of truth to understand that there is a better way. There is a better covenant. And when we begin to understand that, amen, you will see great success in your life, amen. Why don't you bow your heads with me as we begin to pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for great revelation. We thank you, Father, for this next few weeks we will be celebrating the death, the burial, and the resurrection of your son. And Father, we ask that you would continue to reveal the new covenant to us. Reveal the sacrifice of your son and what his blood has allowed us to have through his death. And Father, we pray even right now that you will give us an understanding of the covenant rights that we have through Christ Jesus. And Father, that you would make us bolder and that you would give us more courage and more authority to speak because of that new covenant, that new benefit, that new inheritance that you have provided to us through Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that everyone that is not born again, that they will see you in a new light. They may ask, what must I do to be born again? And Father, I thank you for new revelation of your word. Amen. As we begin to minister, bring new, fresh revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I pray that this word has continued to bless you. Amen. And to bring new life to you as we begin to outlay and dissect this new covenant. I truly believe that God is going to give a word that will motivate you and to bless you, amen, to want to understand more and more of what he has done through his son, Christ Jesus, amen. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, amen, we thank you so much for your continuous seeds of blessings to us, amen. These are tough times, but we know that God is greater than the times that the enemy presents to us, and I thank you so much for your ever-increasing giving in your seeds that keeps us going each Sunday. Amen. As we're not in our physical body, we're still able to pay our bills until that time comes when we are able to rejoin ourselves. But I ask you, continue to reach out, amen, to the members of your local body, amen, and continue to pray for each other, continue to uplift, give a call, give a text, and let somebody know that you're thinking of them and that you love them. Amen. And until next time, until we see you next Sunday, amen, on community, please know that God is love and Jesus is love.